These are the top 10 most affordable towns in Vermont based on income to housing ratios and the overall cost of living. If you don't know me, I'm Jacob Barnes with eXp Realty and I make videos all about Vermont, so you should subscribe to my channel for more like this. Also, I help people buy and sell homes all over Vermont with great reviews, so I would be more than happy to help you buy or sell your home here. Don't be afraid to send me a text or email or give me a call. Let's go. Number one, Newport, Vermont is the most affordable place to live in all of Vermont. You can buy an awesome home here for around $250,000 and even some decent homes under $200,000. Housing prices are 25% lower than the national average here, so if you're looking for affordable housing, this is the place to go. On the plus side, Newport does have the second largest lake in Vermont and is on the border of Quebec. It's also the fourth largest municipality in the Northeast Kingdom, right behind the neighboring town of Derby, so there are plenty of amenities. It's also about 30 minutes to the popular J Peak Ski Resort and 30 minutes to Island Pond, which is the snowmobile capital of the state. There's lots of snowmobiling trails in and around Newport, and in most cases, it's legal to drive your off-road vehicles on the road here. If the poverty and above average crime and drugs doesn't bother you, Newport is a very affordable place to live. Just to break it down, the crime rate isn't actually that much higher than the national average as you can see here. Newport has a lower murder rate than Vermont's overall average, but it does have a higher rate of aggravated assault. The towns around it are pretty affordable as well if you want to live just a little bit outside of the city. Number 2. Brattleboro, Vermont comes in as one of the most affordable places to live in Vermont. West Brattleboro in particular. While Brattleboro has been ranked a town with the number one highest crime rate in the whole state, mostly property crimes, it's a very affordable place to live, which it has to be because unemployment is pretty high here and about 24% of the town lives below the poverty line. Despite the ranking on crime and low income, it's not all bad. Many people state Brattleboro really is not that bad at all and I've had a few people reach out or comment and say that crime isn't that high in Brattleboro. And one person even called me up and accused me of being paid to say that it had the highest crime. I certainly wasn't paid to say that, it's just a fact. What's also a fact is that compared to many cities and areas in different states, Brattleboro really doesn't have crazy crime rates. In fact, according to Home Snacks, the violent crime rate in Brattleboro is 390.9 per 100,000 people. That's 0.8% higher than the national rate of 387.8 per 100,000 people. So you are probably not going to get murdered or assaulted here, that's pretty unlikely. The property crime rate is about double the national average though, so you have about a 4% chance of being a victim of a property crime every year, which is mainly car theft, robberies, or burglaries. According to CrimeGrade.com, 57% of cities are safer, and 43% of cities are more dangerous, so there's quite a few worse places to live. As for prices, housing especially is low compared to the rest of the state and the US in general, but also utilities and services are lower than the state average. At the time of writing this, the median home listed for sale is 239000 so pretty affordable. There are a few housing options below 200000 but 250000 or more is probably what you are looking at for a decent house, especially in one of the nicer neighborhoods of the town. Like Newport, Brattleboro has lots of amenities and is also on the state border. Boston is only about two and a half hours away and New York City is about three hours and 40 minutes. So compared to the rest of the state, it's not too far from those big cities. It is also home to the Vermont Jazz Center, which is the leading jazz venue in New England. My favorite part is the Vermont Country Deli, which has great food and baked goods. Unfortunately, they didn't sponsor me for this video. Number three, Hardwick, Vermont. Hardwick is a small town in the Northeast Kingdom where you can find homes for as low as $150,000 that are actually somewhat livable. If you can spend a little more like 200 to 250,000, the homes get quite a bit nicer though. Crime here is 50% below the national average, so it's a very safe place to live for the most part. There is definitely a little bit of a drug problem in Hardwick though. Education rates are a bit low compared to the national average, and the poverty rate is also at 17%, but the national average is around 14% currently. There's not a whole lot in Hardwick for amenities, so that's kind of a negative, but it is only 25 minutes to Morrisville, 35 minutes to St. Johnsbury, and 40 minutes to the popular tourist town Stowe. There are also a few ponds and lakes nearby where you can swim and go boating. Number four, Barrie, Vermont. Let me clarify real quick and say that there is Barrie City and then there is Barrie Town. Barrie City is what I'm talking about in this video. 
Barrytown is a bit more expensive and also a bit nicer, even though they are pretty close together. Barry City is the largest town in Washington County, which also includes the capital of Montpelier about 15 to 20 minutes away. Because of that, and Berlin being a few minutes away, it has quite a few amenities compared to some of the smaller towns on this list. There is an above average amount of petty crimes and drug issues, and a bit more of a homeless problem than most of the state. For these reasons, Barry is sometimes called Scary Barry by the locals, and it doesn't have a great reputation. The poverty rate is about 22%. The median income is $43,000, and you can buy an okay home for around $200,000, but even better in the $250,000 to $300,000 range. Comparing Barrytown to Barry City, the median home currently for sale in Barrytown is $400,000. It's about 50 minutes from Barry to Burlington and the Burlington International Airport, so you aren't terribly far from the biggest city in Vermont, and pretty much the whole way is interstate, so even in the winter, it's not a bad drive. It's also about an hour to Lebanon, New Hampshire, which has quite a few more amenities. Number five, Rutland, Vermont. Rutland is a larger town with lots of amenities. It does have a train down to New York City, currently being expanded to Burlington with stump stops on the way, which is definitely a plus to living there. Rutland has a wide variety of neighborhood situations as it is the largest on the list. There is also a Rutland town which is a bit nicer and more expensive while still sharing some amenities. West Rutland has a town area and some more rural neighborhoods. Some areas of Rutland are quite nice while other areas are quite obviously flooded with drugs and poverty. Rutland is pretty blessed to be just 20 minutes to the longest open ski resort in the state with lots of awesome trails that people come to from all over the world. Killington Ski Resort is pretty expensive, but Pico Ski Resort is the slightly more affordable side of it. Speaking from experience, both have awesome trails. Killington has some great restaurants and bakeries and outdoor activities in the summer. Rutland itself also has a variety of dining options and things like the Paramount Theater to keep you entertained. Well above the Vermont average, crime in Rutland is overall below the US average. The real issue with the city is the drought epidemic that has taken quite a toll. Other than that, Rutland is not a terrible place to live. Some of the areas around Rutland like Pittsford and Wallingford are also pretty affordable and get you into a bit more rural areas away from the bigger town life. Number 6, Pulteney, Vermont. Pulteney is a small town that used to be home to Green Mountain College, but it went under and a private owner is now figuring out some creative ways to use it. It's about 10 minutes from Castleton University, so it's still not far from a popular college. Pulteney is only 30 minutes from Rutland and 20 minutes from West Rutland, so plenty of amenities within a reasonable distance. Pulteney is home to lots of outdoor recreation like mountain biking trails, swimming pools, and Lake St. Catherine, which has a nice beach where you can swim, boat, fish, and camp out. Pulteney is an outdoor lover's paradise. It is also right on the border of New York, so it's not terribly far from some larger New York towns. Pulteney does struggle with a drug issue like many towns, and because of this, there is a strong police presence in town. The poverty rate is a little above average and the median income is about $55,000, but thankfully you can buy a decent home for as little to $150,000 to $200,000. Of course, if you want a nicer home or even a lake home, it could run into the three, four, and $500,000 ranges. There are also plenty of affordable multifamilies available in this area, which is likely due to the old college and Castleton still being nearby. Number seven, Swanton, Vermont. Swanton is a little town about 15 minutes north of St. Albans and about 40 minutes north of Burlington, so location-wise, it's not in too bad of a spot for amenities and many job opportunities. Swanton is actually a very safe town to live in, although there is a little bit of a drug problem here. Being so close to the Canadian border, I'm sure it doesn't make it better, but that's also a big plus because it's not far from Montreal. Swanton also benefits from being right on Lake Champlain, so some of the nicest homes around are just right on the lake. Of course, those will cost quite a bit more. Swanton has seen a major rise in popularity the past two years, as people who want to live closer to Burlington are expanding their searches to what's affordable. So, Swanton is actually becoming less and less affordable. The home prices don't compare to most of the other places on this list, but the income in this area is also quite a bit higher than the other areas, which is what makes it still relatively affordable. You can find some homes for under $300,000, but the median home currently listed for sale is at $425,000. On a side note, Franklin and Grand Isle counties are much more affordable than Jindon County, especially the more remote you are. So if being about 45 minutes to an hour and a half away from Burlington in a remote area is what you want, you might be able to find a nice house in this corner of Vermont. Number eight, Northfield, Vermont. Northfield is one of my personal favorites on this list. There are certainly areas that aren't very nice there, but there are also very nice areas. Northfield is home to the United States oldest military college, Norwich University, 
which is definitely a good thing for the town. While Northfield doesn't have as many amenities as you might expect being a college town, it's only about 15 minutes to Montpelier, Berlin, and Barrie. One of my biggest complaints about this town, and really central Vermont in general, is that there are lots of poorly maintained dirt roads that just turn into giant ruts in the spring mud season. I think mud season is exaggerated in a lot of videos about Vermont, but if you live down a rural dirt road in central Vermont, it's a very real thing. You can buy a decent home for two fifty dollars to $300,000 here, but there are even some million dollar homes in this town, so it's kind of a mix. Crime is very low here, so you don't have to worry about a whole lot. This is a great place to live if you love the outdoors, but there's not a lot of amenities in this town. Number nine, Bennington, Vermont. Bennington is the largest town in Southern Vermont, and so it varies on the price of homes and also the quality of neighborhoods. The median home price is currently $295,000, but you could buy a home for under $200,000 and maybe even as low as $150,000. Being such a large town, there are lots of amenities here compared to most of Vermont. There are very nice neighborhoods, and then there are not so nice neighborhoods. The nicer neighborhoods are generally a little more outside of the downtown sections. Bennington does have some drug issues and a little bit above average crime, but overall it's not a bad place to live on a budget. It's also less than an hour to Albany and the Albany International Airport. Number 10, St. Johnsbury, Vermont. St. Johnsbury is the largest town in the Northeast Kingdom. Homes in the Northeast Kingdom are often cheaper in general, but that's often because it's pretty remote and there's not really much up there except for moose. Most of the homes are pretty old with little new construction and there's not a ton of job opportunities, so income is pretty low in most of the Northeast Kingdom. St. Johnsbury does have a bit more amenities than the surrounding towns, but it also suffers from the drug epidemic and it has crime just a little bit over above the national average. It's a pretty safe town as violent crime stays low, but petty theft is definitely more common. It's definitely not the best place to live in Vermont, but it is certainly affordable and has reasonable amenities. You can get an okay home for as low as $200,000 and the nicest homes go for up to around $500,000. It's about 45 minutes to Montpelier and an hour to Lebanon, New Hampshire. Those were the top 10 towns, but here's some other towns worth mentioning. Morrisville, Hyde Park, Bellows Falls, Berlin, Marshfield, Danville, Lindenville, the Northeast Kingdom in general, Fairhaven, Castleton, Springfield, Chester, and Randolph. Of course, there are others as well, but those are the main ones. Homes across the lake in upstate New York are also oftentimes cheaper if you don't mind the commute and also the difference in the two states. If your budget is below two or 300000 you have to realize you won't be able to live very close to Burlington. I get people wanting to live in the Burlington area for under 300000 and it's just not possible in this market unless you get an off-market deal or get very lucky. What I want you to take away from this video is that even with a relatively low income, you can live in Vermont, but you probably won't be able to afford living in the places you want to most. Before moving here, make sure you can afford the taxes as Vermont has pretty high property taxes throughout the state. This is Jacob Barnes with eXp Realty and I'll see you next time.